So, my name is Eugene Meidinger, and today we're going to talk about Power BI, license, Power BI licensing in 10 minutes or less. Some people said it couldn't be done. Some people said it shouldn't be done, but today we're going to do it. So, my first question for all of you at home, who here rides the bus? Well, that may not be a valid question anymore, but who here used to ride the bus, right? And the more important and even weirder question I have is, which is cheaper? Is it cheaper to buy a bus or a bus pass? Now, you may be thinking, Eugene, this is a simple math problem, right? A bus costs tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars, but a bus pass usually costs tens of dollars. Well, like anything in IT, the answer is it depends. How many people do we need to bus around? How many people, how many users do we need to support? And what you'll find is that this parallels Power BI licensing. Because when it comes to Power BI licensing, we have two types of options, broadly speaking. We have user licensing, where we license individuals, and we have capacity licensing, where we license compute power, so to speak. With user licensing, as the name suggests, you pay per user. And it's a lot like buying a bus pass. You license the user for a period of time, usually by month, and they get unlimited access to a certain set of features. Typically, you're going to be paying $10 to $20 per month per user. You could pay more if you're going through the Office 365 route, which we'll touch on very briefly. The other option is you could pay for capacity, and this is a lot like buying a bus. First off, if you buy a bus, you can shove as many people on that bus as you want. It might get a little crowded, it might get a little stinky, but no one's gonna stop you except the authorities. Additionally, you could leave that bus completely empty, completely barren, and you're still gonna have to pay the same price because you're paying for capacity. One other thing that's really important that confuses a lot of folks, myself included, is that you assign content to that capacity, not users. When you're dealing with capacity licensing, you're dealing with content and compute capacity. Now, what you're going to find is with Power, with Power BI, you have a plethora of options, and you're going to be asking, well, which one do I want? As a rule of thumb, capacity licensing can be cheaper at around 250 to 500 users. If you have less than 250 users, almost 95, 98% of the time, you're never going to want to consider capacity-based licensing. So let's talk about both of these types in a little bit more detail. First, we have user-based licenses, and there's three types of user-based licenses available. The first is free. Everybody loves free, and it is utter garbage for professional use, unless you have premium capacity to back it up. Power BI free licenses do not support sharing content, with the exception of published web, and if you've ever worked with financial reports, publishing those to web and making the data freely available is a great way to end up in jail. So unless you have premium capacity, you should never, ever be considering a free license. It's great if your child has a lemonade stand and you want to report on how that's doing, but for a professional capacity, you never want to use a free license by itself. Next, we have Power BI Pro. This is the default option. It provides the most, let me restate that, it provides most of the features that you might ever need. It can also be included in Office 365 E5, which is a level higher than most people are going to have. Most folks are going to have the E3 level, but it's about $10 per user per month, and it's the most common solution. Finally, Microsoft forced me to revisit this beautiful slide deck that I had because they added premium per user. Premium per user is a little bit weird because you get all the features with Pro, and then for an additional $10 per user per month, you get a majority of premium capacity features. Not all of them, but you get a lot of them, and you have support for some of these features like machine learning, bigger data sets, all this kind of stuff. Now, there is a catch. The PPU folks ride alone, okay? You would think it's just better than Pro in every way, but that's not true. 
Here we have some documentation from Microsoft on Power BI Premium, and I'm not expecting you to read this big chart in a 10 minute talk, but I want you to see where it says no. Specifically, what it's saying is if you make content with premium per user and you want to share it, folks with a pro license can't use it, folks with a free license can't use it, only other premium per user folks can use it. It's kind of like blood types. You can consume anyone's content, but the only people who can consume your content is other PPU folks. So basically, you're a universal receiver, but you're not a universal donor. Now, let's talk about capacity-based licenses. There's two broad categories and four different SKUs that we want to talk about. The first category is Power BI Report Server, which is basically SSRS underneath the hood. Functionally speaking, it's SQL Server Reporting Services plus some Power BI features. This makes a lot of sense in one of two circumstances. Either because of regulatory reasons, you can't move to the cloud. It just doesn't make sense. And so if you want an on-premises solution for Power BI, this is your main choice. The other is that you have a heavy investment in SQL Server reporting services, and you want to maintain that and take advantage of the skills that your team has already developed. And so in that case, PBI Report Server makes a lot of sense. The other capacity-based license option is Power BI Premium. Now, I find that there's a lot of confusion around this because usually when people say Power BI Premium, they're talking about the P-level SKU. However, there's three SKUs available. There's the A-tier, which is for application embedding. Specifically, it's for independent software vendors. It's for folks making software for other people. The A-tier is provisioned in Azure dynamically, and it is not permitted for internal use. If you're trying to use it for your internal applications, you might be violating the licensing. Next is the EM tier for Office 365 embedding. This is ideal if you just want to be able to put reports in Teams or uh, SharePoint or that sort of thing. And then finally, we have the P tier, which is for the full PowerBI.com experience. Now let's talk a little bit about pricing. Here is a rough guide to the pricing. Now I have some asterisks and some plus signs because there's some weird edge cases. For the A tier, you can start at roughly $735 per month. You pay per minute and you can scale it all the way up to $23,500 per month or more if you reach out to Microsoft and you have a very large database. But on your own, this is the price range that you can get with Azure. With the EM tier, you can buy that top level price by yourself. You can get the EM3 level for basically $2,500 a month on your own. There are two lower levels, but you have to contact your sales rep. And so I wasn't able to validate that those prices are still the same. But when it first came out, it started at $625 per month. Finally, with the P tier, you can get levels P1 through 3 for $5,000 to $20,000 per month or bigger if you have uh, the okay from Microsoft. Finally, there's one last gotcha that's gonna catch people off guard. You have to license the bus driver as well. If you are producing reports, if you are creating reports and you wanna publish them somewhere, you have to be licensed with Power BI Pro. Even if you're using Power BI Report Server, even if you're using premium capacity, all of your report creators have to have Power BI Pro or better in order to create reports within the licensing framework. So, takeaways. First, Power BI Pro is both cheap and it's gonna provide most of the features that you need. Power BI Premium per user is this weird blend that's a universal consumer, but not a universal donor, donor of content. And then finally, you should only buy capacity for either a large number of users, very large data models, or you need to stay on-prem. Thank you, everyone. You can find me on Twitter at SQLGene or you can email me at eugene at sqlgene.com.